<laughs> so basically, the explanation I've got is Nabil Qureshi's explanation, which is one in being and free in person. A being is that which makes you what you are. A person is that which makes you who you are. Yeah. And, and what I say is, what I am is human, and what my name is, is my person. So I'm, I'm trying to think, like, how would I be able to explain it fully? Because then I, I would be told, well, how did God become a child and suck on Mary's breasts? Okay. I've been told that a million times. Right, so, so, so the, the, the question that, that God becomes a child and suckles on Mary's breasts has no connection to the Trinity. That's yeah. a question about the incarnation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when people raise that, it's a red herring. Usually the kind of argument that they raise is, how can one be three and three be one? Okay, and then they'll come out with a silly kind of statement. One plus one plus one equals one. No, it equals three, but you believe it's one because you're stupid. And then you said to them, well, if I've got a half Quran, a wash Quran, and a Dori Quran, how many Qurans I've got? And invariably they'll say one. Having just said that one plus one plus one doesn't equal one. But there you go. Um, so in terms of, in terms of the, the explaining the Trinity, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to. Um, so you just know, say that one we, being. We, so yeah, persons, he's, that, he's, that he's a really good way because what, what he's essentially said is the way that the way in which the three are one and the way in which they are three is not the same. And once you realise that, the idea that three can be one and one can be three make, is totally rational, totally logical. Because if the way that they are one and the way that they are three is different, shall we just step away from uh, Abbas and Allah? Because I want to I want to focus on what you're saying. Yeah. If we're saying that the way in which that they are three and the way in which that they are one is different, then rationally that stands up. Yeah. yeah. And you can demonstrate that three can be one and one can be three because we all live in three-dimensional space. Everyone who's got a brain will agree with that. Yes. But this dimension is not the same as this dimension, and which is not the same as that dimension. Exactly. You know. But yet we, we accept that these three are one, because we're studying right now. Yeah, we're three-dimensional ourselves. Yeah. Okay? So... Well, where they, their, their, their opinion of it, if I could slow it down a bit, their opinion of it is basically that, that we are three different, that no, that God is three different persons. And I've, I've tried to explain, it's, it's one being and three yeah. persons. But yeah. the problem is, my explanation is... What, what, Muslims, what Muslims invariably do, what Muslims invariably do. Are you, do you want my coat? Are you, no, no, it's all right. It's really all right. Cold. I'm shaking yeah. randomly. It's all right. Fair, are you, are are you cold? cold? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, it's cold anyway, but I'm fine. Fair enough. Okay. Probably. So in terms of in terms of in terms of um, this question, yeah. the, the 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 thing that we've got to recognise is that that the errors that Muslims make in their arguments are, are one of two ways. They either confuse the persons and say that the three persons are one person, or that they divide. The divinity and say that one god is three gods and invariably whenever muslims make arguments against the trinity they either do error one or error two yeah. i'm yet to meet a muslim yet and i've been doing this for years now i'm yet to meet a muslim that will actually argue against the trinity as we believe in the trinity yes. what they do is they invent a straw man trinity and then argue against the straw man trinity so they invite they invent either three persons being one person which is not what we believe exactly or they invent the idea that the divinity is divided into three but well, they also believe that which is Mary not what we believe is part of the trinity which well is this is the thing hold on an educated muslim knows better muhammad hijab knows better but the quran doesn't know better because the quran says that the trinity is allah jesus and mary but that is not what we believe so in terms of explaining it what i would say is you start in the old testament and you show in the old testament that there is only one God, that God is one within himself, and that there are no other gods. So we've established that there is only one and that God is one within himself, and there aren't any other divinities. So it's one, one, one. Yeah? Okay? Yeah. And then you show in the New Testament that the Father is God, that the Son is God, and that the Holy Spirit is God. So if the Father is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, and the Son is God, but there's only one God, and there aren't any other gods, and only one God should be worshipped, then biblically we're right to understand that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one God. Because they can't be three separate gods, because there are no other gods. And they can't be a division within God, because God is one within himself. And there isn't another God to be worshipped, so we can't worship these three uh, as separate gods. But at the same time, they are all God. 
So that, that's biblically how we do it. Yeah, and do you know the verses for that? Um, well, um, I mean, what? if you've watched enough of my videos, you probably would have seen them quote them variably. Um, the verses for what? Say, to, to show, to show what? I've, to, those are your three points. When you go and watch this again on video, yeah. I would say yeah. Genesis one chapter. What? what well, chapter what? one one. It, it says it right there. Go on. In the beginning, God created heaven, earth, and earth, and earth was without right. form of void. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably going to post that one. And darkness so was upon the face of God, and the Spirit of God yeah, cool, well, thank moved you upon the face right. of water, and God said, like, 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 like. And then if you go yeah, down yeah. a bit more, um, sorry, there's a passage where it says day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It does say oh, sorry, no, no, no. In Genesis, it does, it does use the, it does I'm, use I'm, the plural. I'm literally new to this because I've just been continuously yeah, yeah. reading it. Yeah, yeah. It does but. say this, but I, I do want to pick this up because a lot of Christians use um, Genesis chapter one, verse one, to talk about the Trinity, and 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 that is actually a really poor use of scripture. Is it? If you're, yeah, because if you're saying <sighs> no, no, one second, one second, <laughs> it does, it does show the Holy Spirit, and it does show. That the Holy Spirit and and God are not the same person. Yeah, but if you look, if you look at Genesis, but what eight, I'm saying, sorry. what I'm saying is, it doesn't. Some people use this to try and say that the whole Trinity is there, and I think that's a bad use of scripture. Okay, so Genesis Cause, eighteen, because it implies that light is created. So it's Genesis Let there 18. be light, and then they use light as a reference to Jesus, and that is meaning that Jesus is created, and that's why that is a bad use of the Old Testament. But so the Old Testament does show Trinity in the sense of shadowing. I would no. say Genesis 16. It's either Genesis 16 or I Genesis 18, where God, basically, God um, comes down to Abraham in Mamre, and he appears at the door, and and he says, he says, Lord, and there's three of them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is Trinity in shadow. Yeah, that's true. So, so in the same way that our shadows right now have our form, but they don't have our detail, in the Old Testament, you see the Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. But the detail comes in the New Testament. It's like if that camera of JC starts at the shadow, like if it starts over there and captures my shadow, you've got the outline of my shape, but then the detail comes when you look at me. So the Old Testament shows the Trinity in shadow, and then the New Testament shows the Trinity in detail. Yeah, yeah? so it's like a close look. Do you yeah, get it? Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah? What you're saying. So, so yes, that, that would be an example of it. But what I would say is when it comes to, when it comes to, um, the Trinity, take them through the 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 the, the, the step by step, where, where it teaches that there's one God, there's only one God, there isn't another God, and that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 Now the thing is, if they don't want to accept that, like if they're going to argue that this is illogical, don't feel that you need to jump around to their tune. If they're saying, oh well, that doesn't prove it, don't don't go well, running. What I would normally say is that. Me, me, um, geez, God was sucking on Mary's breast or saying that God had sex with Mary. It's this kind of diversion. Well, these, 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 these are kind of stupid arguments. I know they're stupid arguments, but it, it just gets to the point where I'm trying to explain it. And yeah. because but I'm the, looking through my what I'm saying, bro, is, what I'm saying, bro, is no, hold, you know hold, hold firm. Hold, we'll come no, back. I, I didn't say no, that. We, no, we, we don't believe that. that. We don't believe that. that. But how do they know this? They, 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 yeah, they just ah, make it up. Okay. They, they just make, make it up. They come in with stupid arguments. They said, how come Jesus was sucking? I mean, you have to prove it in the text. Without the text, you don't know what happened. But, 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 I mean, the, the point is, it's actually irrelevant to the idea of whether Jesus is God. If Jesus is God, and he becomes a man, and as a child suckles on his mother's breasts, that doesn't mean that he's not God. God is not defined about whether he can or can't become a man. And if he can become a man, and he does become a man, and then for he, he places himself within that world, it's, it's not an argument that he isn't God. Well, what I've actually said is... Sorry. Why not say, if it's not in the text, yeah, then Don't your statement it. your statement has no, has no veracity because it can't be backed up with evidence. Because, because the, 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 the statement works with the logic of the text, which is what we believe that Jesus became truly man and was a true child, yeah. and so therefore was a true babe. And therefore, like all babes, would have suckled on his mother's well, breast. The, the, the example I've used is basically in the Quran. It says that Moses saw the fire, and, and the fire was apparently described as God. So, if, how can God become a fire, like a roaring fire, but he can't become a human? Well, how can is, he enter his creation? Exactly. This is the, exactly. way, this is the this, but this is the point that I've been trying to prove and demonstrate: is that yeah. there's plenty of text in the Quran and the Hadiths that demonstrate that Allah does become a man. And if Allah does become a man then, sorry, not my apologies, let's get this right, that Allah does enter his creation. And if Allah does enter his creation in any sense, then why can't he become a man? Exactly. 
you know, because what's the difference between God entering through, uh, being small enough to go through the birth canal, and then the infinite God entering the lowest heaven? In terms of, in terms of sizes, I mean, are we really saying that the infinite, that the infinite uh, is somehow, um, you know, more containable in the lowest heaven than it is within the birth canal of a woman. Really like it's, it's kind of like you're really clutching at straws. If something is infinite, he is infinite, and therefore, to the infinite, the lowest heaven is as small as the birth canal of a woman. Exactly. And if God can enter into the lowest heaven, then that means why can't he enter into the birth canal of his mother? Exactly. You know. Allah has hands, doesn't he? Exactly. Which he used point. to create Adam with. And what's that? It says that Allah has a shape. And if Allah has a shape, then that means he shares a category with us because we also have a shape. Our shape may not be like Allah's shape, Allah's shape may be different, but there is a category that we have in common. And so their concept of God being completely different to his creation is broken down and language starts to become meaningless. We want to come back to the Trinity. So in terms of the Trinity, you've also got to separate out the rational arguments about can one be three and three be one, from the theological demonstrations of what the Bible teaches. That there's one God, there's only one God, there's only one God to be worshipped. God is one within himself and the Father is that God, the Son is that God and the Holy Spirit is that God. So you separate those two things out. So don't, don't conflate those arguments. And then you can demonstrate that three can be one, like three dimensional space. You can demonstrate the rationality of it by pointing out that the way in which they are three and the way in which they are one is not the same and therefore it isn't involving a rational contradiction. And, and the, the one by Nabil Qureshi is what God is and who God is. That's also a very good one. But I want to I tell you some bad ways to explain the Trinity, because I hear a lot of bad ways of explaining the Trinity. Go on, Bob. Saying, Sorry, that, <laughs> saying, that, saying that I am a father and I am a son and I am a husband is a bad way of explaining the Trinity because that's modalism. That's saying that I am one person who becomes a different person depending on who I'm talking to. Christians don't believe in modalism. We don't believe that the Father becomes the Son and then becomes the Holy Spirit. We believe that these are three different persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So don't use that, that's a bad analogy. Yeah? Another one. Another bad analogy. Um, another bad verse that is used is the one I said in Genesis. Yeah, I've been using that. It's yeah, fine. because you, you, you don't have the full... Genesis has the shadow of the Trinity because it says we shall create man in our image. Yeah. It speaks in the plural form. But that only indicates that, that there's a plurality. It doesn't no, demonstrate what that it'll plurality just, it'll just is. It just make them think there's three deities instead of... Well, no, no. I mean, what yeah, I'm saying yeah, is it, on its own it doesn't prove the mind. Trinity, but it yeah. indicates what can be mm. can be seen as the Trinity when you take the Bible as a whole. Because the thing is, as Christians, we, got it, we, we use the whole of the Bible. Not just this bit of the Bible, yeah, not just that bit of the Bible, but the whole of the Bible. Exactly. Yeah? Um, another kind of bad argument to demonstrate the Trinity. Triangle. A triangle, yeah, a triangle is a bad argument. And the reason why it's a bad argument is because the three sides another are thing. one, yes, so it demonstrates that three can be one, but it doesn't demonstrate the Trinity because each of the sides has to be fully a triangle for that analogy to work. Yeah. And, and, and a triangle, obviously, the three sides are not each fully a triangle. So that's a bad analogy. Yeah. A better analogy, a better analogy that is similar to the triangle is the idea of three dimensional space. Because each one of the dimensions is fully a dimension, but each one is distinct from the other. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So separate out the rational argument about three can be one and one can be three from the theological demonstrations from scripture. Yes. Yeah? yeah. They lose yeah. on both points, but so. it's about marshalling your arguments systematically. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, you're going to meet and don't be fooled. If someone doesn't want to listen, they're not going to listen. No, no, I understand that. If, uh, if they're there just to disprove my arguments and just to disprove Christianity because they want to make a lot of greatest good. Uh, I can't really change that. I can't change their opinions. I can't, I can't yeah. really. But if they're there to learn, I actually want to be able to yeah. to explain the Trinity and then to explain the gospel to them. So your, your homework is, when you go home, <laughs> is, is to go and find a verse that shows that there is only one God. I've got homework now. Right? It? To go away and to show that God is one. Yeah. To go away and show that there aren't any other gods. Yeah. Clear verses that say that, and there are clear verses that say that very black and white. I, I, I think then, I've seen them, I'm just... Then, then I want you to go away and I want you to find verses that show that Jesus is God in black and white. And that 
the oh Father God, is God. Abraham, I am. That, that, that's a that good. Work? That's a good evidence. But Muslims won't accept that. Yeah. But but it is a good evidence because because Jesus is taking the divine name and applying it to himself. Exactly. And the Jews understood what he was saying. Well, that's what he tried to story. Well, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of like somehow the the Muslims of later centuries seem to think that they know better than the audience of Jesus. The audience of Jesus was pretty convinced that he was calling himself God. They tried to kill him for it. But somehow, we've all misunderstood that. They've all misunderstood that. And some Muslims at Speaker's Corner in the 21st century actually know what really happened. Ah, okay. You know? So don't... Part of what you need, part of what all Christians need, is to have some real inner strength and conviction about what we believe and stand by. Exactly. And not to have to dance to their tune, running around, thinking that we have to jump through their loopholes because we don't yeah because I'll just say where, where was that where, where's this where's, where's it say that Jesus is God and, like, if, you, if well, you bring them at like, something that's, that claims that they'll still be like well what happened here and they'll just skip the argument yeah yeah that's another thing to do don't let them skip around the Bible like it, don't let them skip actually ask them to engage with what you're presenting to them exactly. and to deal with the argument that you're presenting to them yeah. so the, 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 the fact that Jesus takes the divine title and applies it to himself not just taking it and applying it to himself, but does so in such a way as to suggest that he existed before Abraham. Yeah? yeah. Like, they have to engage with that point. Yes. You know? Because, because they have got to engage with the fact that Jesus is claiming preeminence before Abraham in time and status. Yes. So that yes. means he's, he's ahead of the covenant. So the covenant that Abraham established, the one from which the Mosaic covenant emerged... Jesus is claiming preeminence before those covenants themselves. So who can be greater than the covenant that God establishes with Israel? Yeah, and the Jews knew that. But they've got, Muslims have got to engage with that argument. And any Muslim who's watching this, I'd ask you to be sincere. Your faith tells you to be sincere. So sincerely engage with the texts and what the texts say. Yeah, has that helped? Yeah, it's helped. I'll go over and study it more and try to yeah. I'll listen but, to what you're saying, not replay it back again. But don't good. don't feel you need to run around after them. If they are not willing to, to engage, if they're not willing to listen, then all you can do is deliver the truth, speak it, and then if they don't want to listen to that, you don't feel that you have to run around on calls after them. I see what you're saying. It's just like with the Hebrew Israelites, I did the same thing. Where I was like, I have to show them this first, but they weren't willing to listen to it. Yeah. They were like, Jesus is black, and it doesn't matter what you say, Jesus is coming for the Israelites even though it doesn't say that he actually says he's, he's um, fulfilled that covenant yeah but the, the laws are still wait, the laws still exist so he didn't change the laws but through his blood we are saved yeah am, am I explaining that right we are saved through his blood yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so but the thing is they, they have to be willing to, to yeah. engage they have to be willing yeah? to engage. but you don't need to run around after them if you've given a perfectly good demonstration they have to uh, tell you what's wrong with your demonstration and if they can't do that without straw manning you, yeah. which is often what they do, in my experience, they straw man you. If they can't do that without straw manning you, then your argument is valid and they have to deal with that. Yeah. Exactly. yeah? And they can't don't let them get away with double standards. They'll they'll say to you, you can't you can't take a little snippet out of the Quran in isolation without looking at the whole. But that's exactly what Hashim does with the Bible. All the time. Yeah, yeah, all the time. He has four words in the New Testament that he likes to quote, and he ignores all the other words in the New Testament. Only true God. Yeah, only true God. If you listen to Hashim's version of the Bible, you'd think those were the only words. I saw a debate with him in Kay, and he was, he was talking about how the old laws still stand, and he basically was taking one verse out of context. So yeah, because again, again that's, that's the only way that they can operate. Uh, that, you know? But I showed, I've showed verse after verse and passage after passage and hadith after hadith that demonstrate that um, that God according to the Quranic texts enters into his creation he's said to be in heaven he's said to descend to the lowest heaven he's said to appear as a shape he's said to have been to be seen he's he's he said to his voice he's, he speaks from the burning bush now the voice of Allah can't be separate from Allah himself according to their belief so where the voice of Allah is, the presence of Allah is. Unless they're trying to say that he's a ventriloquist. <laughs> the, crazy the Hebrew Israelites. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can hear them from mouth to way. Yeah, 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 I haven't seen you. <laughs> so see you. They're not even the day. Torrent of abuse. I've got a tool to call the slave. 
I got called all sorts of racist terms. Like I, I love the white man. It was Shocking. crap. Well, that's all right. That's all right because I love the black man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't have a problem with the yeah, white yeah. man. There's no wrong. There's no wrong with loving the white man. There's no wrong with loving the black man either. The way they said it, it was more like I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. They were saying that I was a bum. What? Listen, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. You gotta talk to Hebrew Israelites. There's something wrong with them. But they have a problem. I have. They just shout. Don't bring him over, don't no. bring him over, because I want to do a talk, JC. They were all going, they were all They were just yeah. saying vulgar things, to be honest, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll call the doctor. Yeah. You know? Okay, no worries. I have to It's a really good place to go. Another one, he, he, someone who's really good at defending the Trinity, Yeah. right? Is Sam Shamoon. Yeah, triple yeah. B. But, but the guy, the guy has zero patience. He's not a <laughs> I know, teacher. I, I know yeah, I've yeah. seen him. He has zero patience yeah. for anyone. He gets but, angry. But, but he is a very good, he's, he's a very good apologist and he really knows his stuff yeah. to demonstrate the Trinity. But don't expect any patience from him at all. You know? Yeah. So like, but he is a very good teacher. So you. he's a good source to go to and he'll give you lots of verses. I think sometimes though, he gives you maybe too many and you kind of get lost in the, the, the trees. Well, the, the, verses the, I've been, the verses I've been using, the, the, the verses I've been going to, I've been going to, uh, what's his name? Uh, he's a Christian apologist online. Dr. James White? Um, Dr. David Wood? No, no, he, he did, he, they recently did a whole um, big apologist. Ah, uh, Anthony went, Rogers? No? Okay. No, 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 oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, Is he white or black? He's a white man. Um, uh, uh, words, why are they not? Islam critique? Right, yeah, Islam but basically that, that, that's who I, Sorry, I go to. I yeah. go to him. I go to obviously David. You, you know one. Well, you know one of the good point. You know one of the good rules of a debate. Uh, one of the good and rules Jay of a Smith debate is to make your point concise. Yeah. Make your point concise. Don't waffle. I don't. Know, that's just what I tend just to do. yeah. You, well, don't. If you want to be a good debater, don't waffle. Just go straight to the point that you want to make. Give them the conclusion first, yeah. and then when you give them the conclusion. They might ask you then to justify the conclusion and then you can give your evidence. Yeah? yeah? So go straight for the conclusion, but say it in as few words as possible. Make your point in as few words as possible. Sometimes your point might be very nuanced and complicated and so you still have to use a lot of words. But be as, be as conservative with the words as you can. Don't waffle. People will spot if you waffle. Yeah, and they'll use that tomorrow. They'll use and, that and, against then, me. and then they'll try to... Dis you might make a lot of good points amidst all your waffle, but you might discredit yeah. your argument in the eyes of people because they don't, they, they lose the main point you're making amidst the waffle. Okay, that's yeah. 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 <laughs> the thing about debating. Ah, nice. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, cool. Nice one. Does that help? Yeah, that helped a lot, man. Captain. Uh, thank you. All right, I, I, Captain Blood, uh, uh, Bloodfire. Yeah. Big up. No, I'm going to leave him. I'm going to leave him. All right, um, cool. So, wait, wait, let's. You want to wrap up for this one? No. Yeah, do a wrap up for, oh, yeah, yeah. do a wrap up for this discussion. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Action. So Christians, like a couple of things about about apologetics and about demonstrating the faith. Firstly, study, 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 and then study some more, and then follow that up with some more study, because like that's going to help you. But always make sure that you're you're working within the the main frame of of good academic solid studies not not some spurious thing you've just found off the internet after a google search try to make your points as concisely as you can often particularly in these kind of street debates it's better to give your conclusion immediately and then justify your conclusion when it's demanded yeah or when you've got time but give your conclusion first so that people have that hearing in their in their mindset Always try to bring the, the, the topic of conversation back to the Christian faith. If you just end up, if people just go away from this debate thinking about Islam or atheism, then, then that's what they end up going away and thinking about. We want people to be thinking about our Lord Jesus Christ, so try to bring it back to our Lord at all times. Make your points as concisely as possible with as few words as you can, though of course don't think to yourself that few words are always better, because sometimes a nuanced, complicated point demands a lot of words. Finally, Bring your evidences back to scripture and make sure that your examples are solid. You know, the idea that I am a father, a, a, a son and a husband is a bad example for the Trinity. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a good example that three can be one, but you've got to then separate out that th the argument about three being one and the Trinity as two separate things. 
like separate those two things out and remember that if something is one if the, the way in which something is one and the way in which something is three is not the same it doesn't imply a logical contradiction and an example of that is three-dimensional space which is both three and one and no one would argue that the three dimensions are really one dimension or that the one dimension is really three dimensions or that dimensionality is not shared between all three dimensions yeah we've got to we've got to be sharper as christians in the way that we communicate our faith because right now a lot of christians sadly are doing a bad job and i think that's because as a culture within the church we've lost the art of apologetics and we've lost scholarship and we've lost the idea of study within our faith and that's something that we have to recover anyway thank you bob